G'day guys, it's Dave from Wing Chun Mind Force. A bus talk today in the actual bus. Good old bus, I love buses. And I've missed sitting here talking to you like this. Um, got a really interesting subject for you today. My idea is that your Nimdao is your animal mind. And I've spoken this about this before, but I've been thinking about this and getting some interesting ideas coming to me. So um, I just want to share with you these ideas. The first idea is that wild animals can't be tamed. And that's a sort of a known thing, but we don't think about it that much unless you're involved with wild animals. But things that are domesticated like dogs, cats, cats are sort of wild animals, but you know, dogs, especially cows, horses, they're sort of semi-wild, but they're domesticated. They, you can train them. Whereas wild animals like a kangaroo out of the bush or a, a deer or a bear or, you know, a bird, a lot of creatures who are from the wild, they never really can be tamed. It takes many generations to to turn them into something that can live in a human type world and that's my theme i i think that what we're aiming to do in wing chun is to discover the wild animal within ourselves and in a weird way it's like your conscious mind is the dominator but it overlays your wild self and your wild self is there deep inside you and sometimes we see it when we get really angry or we're making love to somebody beautiful um, when we're in danger the classic like Nima and I were talking about the other day lifting cars off friends or you know, Nima told a story about throwing a whole helicopter off somebody that's the wild animal it usually only comes out when in extreme. So I think in Wing Chun, what we're doing is peacefully, gently and softly making friends with our wild animal. And that's the only way to really deal with wild animals. If you try to dominate them, beat them with a stick, electrocute them, <laughs> horrible ways people use to train things, it just doesn't work. They don't get it. And even domesticated stuff, you know, there is a, that stuff can work to a certain extent. But the uh, the horse whisperer, the animal whisperer type person is somebody that understands that you can't use that carrot and stick stuff with wilder creatures. And um, my cousin, actually, I'm I'm thinking I should go and do an interview with him, but he and my uncle, who's now sadly passed away, Uncle Ronnie, um, Ron Bostock and Ian Bostock, they both are famous for having tamed or, you know, taught a zebra to take a rider. Um, they worked on that movie called Racing Stripes. And Ian, my cousin Ian, went over to Africa and the American people who were making it had a guy there who was a master horse whisperer, apparently, and he just couldn't get the zebra to do what they wanted to allow the girl to ride him. So they were going to give up and, and paint a, a horse to look like a zebra. But my cousin said, no, really, give me a bit more time. I think we can do it. So he rang my uncle, Ronnie, the real old bushman and wonderful guy with horses and just a wonderful guy, an artist, actually. He, They talked about it and Uncle Ronnie gave him some strategies and they did it and you can see the proof in the movie but it was all about gentleness and it was all about connecting to the animal and so what I'm saying is that I, th I think that um, when we're training ourselves in Wing Chun to bring out this Nim Lik, this mind force, this inner power to switch on the, the Nim Dao which is the wild mind, the subconscious mind you can't do it by trying hard. And that's also something Nima 
expressed brilliantly about trying too hard and then losing that the magic that Sigung had seen in him and then he started trying too hard, said, right, I'm going to get this. And he was training really hard and then and he went backwards. I really appreciated him telling that story because some people, you know, with an ego, they like, oh, don't go exposing my weaknesses or my reversals. But that was a great story because all of us go through things like that. Um, it was when he wasn't trying that Sigong saw the real thing happening and those of us I'm sure you guys are the same you know when you feel Wing Chun power happening as it should it's effortless and it's like oh I wasn't even trying you know I didn't feel like I was doing anything um, another type of wild animal is called a baby and when we're babies we are literally wild animals anybody who's had babies knows that they are they poo where they want to, they pee where they want to, they scream their bloody head off for hours on end. Only a wild animal could do it. How they do it, they never get exhausted, they just keep going. And they're incredibly strong. You get up close to them, they have no malice, but they smack you across the face and you know about it. And they kick you and some of them bite. But we train the wild animal... The wild animal never goes away, but we we put it away in a box. You know, the human training of our, our human cultures trains us to get with the program. Literally, it's a program, and we we switch off a lot of that wild nature. We put it in a box, we hide it, we cage it. So a baby... If a baby was six foot tall, it would be pure Wing Chun power. So we're aiming to get back to that. And um, the main thing is meditation, which is what Wing Chun is. It's a moving meditation. But it's not meditation in the European sense where you think about stuff, you know, the meditate upon this, you know, meditate upon this concept in the West means to consciously think about something, to mull it around in your mind, think about the words. Eastern meditation's very different. It's about not thinking, about not using that human conscious wordy mind, but going back into the subconscious to quieten the mind to like an animal state. Um, Bruce Lee, one of my... Um, great heroes and uh, I'm not sure if this is right but he's he's like Dai Seaback I think he's like um, he's my master's elder brother in Wing Chun but a lot of what he wrote is pure high level Wing Chun people don't recognize it because they don't know this stuff but I recognize it and in the poem that is it is called um, a Taoist priest at the start of his book, or well, the book that was compiled for him after his death, the Tao of Jeet Kune Do, um, one of the verses says, "No thinking, no reflecting, perfect emptiness. Yet therein something moves, following its own course." And that's exactly what I'm talking about. The it, um, Bruce Lee also in the re sort of digitally remastered enter the dragon they added back this scene at the start which had been cut out in a theatrical release back in the day where bruce is talking to his master after that fight where he fights samo hung you know the chubby guy <laughs> good fighter um he's talking to this old master and they're walking this like the old shaolin master and He's asking him what is the, you know, first precept of Shaolin. And then at the end, Bruce Lee, he says, you know, about expanding and contracting. And he says, and when I hit, I don't hit. It hits all by itself. And then the master says, and what is this it you're talking about? 
so that it is it. It's the wild animal. It's um, Bruce was really crazy about a book called Zen in the Art of Archery by Eugene Herigel. And I'm actually crazy about it too. I've been into that for years and it is all about it. Um, this mysterious, uncontrollable something that's other than your conscious mind and other than trying to hit the target. And it's, once again, it's the wild animal. And a good friend of mine taught me that when you feel chi, and I've talked about it, secrets in plain sight, that, that feeling of presence in your hands and other parts of your body, but like it's moving you of its own accord, you're not really moving, it's something's moving you. And I spoke about how Sigung's son, Horace Chu, talks about that in an essay in Sigung's book about a doll made of wool and you start to feel the wool moving itself inside rather than you making the limb move. That has to be this thing, it has to be the subconscious, like the wild animal. And the experience of it is as if you're, as the conscious person, you're sort of watching this happen, you're watching it happen. And that's what I think Sigung gets at when he's saying Nimlik will look after you in a fight. Nimlik, you want Nimlik to do everything. Nimlik is the force that comes from that Nim Dao, which is the subconscious mind, which is the the mind of nature, the that hidden inner animal, that lost baby inside of you. And um, I've just made a few notes. Uh, how can we practically do something about this? Well, the first thing is to lose yourself. Um, don't try, lose your ego. So when you're doing chi sao, when you're doing the forms, just sort of forget trying to be good at it because you can't be good at it, okay? You can get pretty good, but the you that we want to be good at it is that secret us, that um, Nim Dao, that hidden us, that wild us, you want that to do it. So the path there is not to add on stuff, not to try, it's to let go. And it's a bit scary. You have to just let go of being good, let go of understanding, let go of what the hell's going on, who cares? Just relax, let people hit you in chi sao, let just you work on letting go being soft, empty, um, find that mind state where you stop thinking, talking. So any, any kind of meditation practice helps this, but Wing Chun is a meditation practice in itself. Uh, don't think, feel is one thing Bruce said, which is my favorite interpretation of what Sil Nim Dao means. Don't think, feel, don't Use the conscious mind, use the subconscious. And lastly, this is weird, but I would say treat yourself as if you're a wild animal or, or as if you've got a wild animal in you and you know you have, you wild bugger. Just be gentle with it. You can't coerce it, you can't force it, just be gentle be soft that's what we're doing it's by being soft we're not becoming weak we're actually taking the conscious mind out of the equation and allowing the true power to come out that the power of the wild the power of the being that's part of nature connected to the Tao. all that makes sense so from me and my bus i'll say adieu and um See you again next week. And there'll be more good interviews coming. I've got a few people I'm trying to line up. Some people are a little shy. So um, I've just got to 
I don't know who it's going to be actually, but I've got a couple of people lined up that it might be. So um, please send suggestions if you really want to hear from somebody. And uh, see you later.